Hello, this is Sophie from Trifold Productions with another Blender quick tip. And in this quick tip, I'm going to show you another way you can add crowds to your scenes. Uh, this is another add-on called the Procedural Crowds add-on. It's just like the Horde add-on, uh, but it's a little bit different. It's got some extra, I guess, perks to it. And I'll leave a link of it um, below this video so you can download yourselves and try it out. Uh, but once you've downloaded it onto your computer, it's the same process, but a little bit of a different installation. Go to Edit, Preferences, Install. Now you'll navigate to where you've installed or downloaded onto your system. And the way it'll look, it'll look like is like this. You'll see the add-on itself, which is this. Do not unzip this. Just click on that folder where this is and click on uh, the add-on. And then after you've done that, I've already done it myself. Uh, let me type it in so you can see what it looks like. And that's where it is. Now it has uh, another step that you'd have to do to install the actual, uh, I guess, assets itself into the add-on. And that is what you're going to have to unzip. Okay, you're going to see the second file called Procedural Crowds Assets version 1.0.9 and unzip that to this folder or to its own folder. It'll unzip to, to its own open folder. And then you'll go back to Blender where the add-on is and then you'll click on this icon here and then you'll navigate to where this folder is. Click in there. Copy, left click left click there, control V to paste that. And then you'll click on that folder and accept, accept. And then that will give the add-on ac access to the assets that it needs to actually work in Blender, which would be the humans, the clothing, things like that. And then once that's done, you're ready to go. Now this is for Blender 3.4 and above, I think. I know it's for 3.4. And it's got uh, pretty much the same kind of uh, workflow as the uh, Horde add-on, but it's a little bit better, in my opinion, actually. Let's delete this cube, shift in our keyboard, mesh, plane. I'm going to scale this up to make it a lot, a lot bigger S to scale it up. S a little bit more. And then it'll be in the tool panel on the right hand side of the user interface click on that and you'll see it has all these different uh, thumbnails so that you can access and show which crowd you would want to populate in your scene you have an audience you have a circle a follow curve march random walk and stadium see the horde didn't have uh, all of these the horde had the zombies walk cycles run cycles and idling but this has a, a lot more categories to it now the audience, you can click on that with your plane selected, click on add crowd. And I think you can actually uh, add your own uh, models to it, but that's a whole different process. And all of these, they come textured and animated. If we click on play on our keyboard, you can see that they're moving, they're in idle position, so they're moving. And then if we, it, pro, it renders an uh, Eevee and a cycle, so we're gonna change our viewport. Right now we're in Eevee. It's gonna change our viewport to match uh, the render, rendering process here. And once again, between Eevee and cycles, it pretty much looks the same, but cycles looks more realistic, has better shadows and you know ray casting and things like that. And it takes a little bit longer to render out but if we zoom in, you can see the models are here. Let me change the world lighting here so we can see a little bit better. Yeah, so you have a lot of models here. And some of them, uh, when they stand side by side, they're kind of the same. But you can change all that by going to the cross settings. Uh, you have, you can toggle between them being idle and then the characters being more animated. Let's click play there and see they're like, you know, cheering at a concert, which is pretty nice. Can uh, increase the width, give you more space in between the characters. And the 
thing with this is that when you increase the width, it actually adds more characters. It looks like it's adding more characters in between. But yeah, that's that's something that's a little bit different. The thickness that goes from front to back, at adding more people towards the rear. As we expand, they get more. Uh, the scale, this is the size of the people. Um, random scale, different heights, things like that. Um, change the seed, the probability. And if you want them to actually stick to the floor, seems like it's lagging a little bit. If you want to stick them to stick to the floor, you just apply the option there. You can actually have these characters focus on something by clicking on the, adding a cube or a sphere and putting that in the slot for as a point of interest so they can look at that uh, item. And when you move the item back and forth, they'll focus on that item as you move it, which is helpful if you have a scene with like a caravan of vehicles going down the street. The characters will actually look and follow the vehicle as it goes down the street with their eyes if you make that a point of interest. Now the other, <clears throat> excuse me, the other options here. Uh, let's start a new scene. That's usually the best thing to do with some of these add-ons so that it doesn't really crash the add-on. General, don't save. I may delete this cube again, shift A. Plane, that's to scale it up. And we're going to go to procedural crowds again. And another one I want to show you is follow the curve. If you left click on that, uh, if you click on add crowd, it's going to give you this uh, notice that's saying that it only works on a curve. That's how this works. <clears throat> We're going to add a curve to our plane here. And the best way to add a curve here is to look at it from the top view by pressing 7 on your keyboard. And then Shift A, Curve, and there's your curve. If we scroll up on our mouse wheel, we'll see the curve is here. But if you want to add a longer curve without having to edit this one, there's a really easy way to do that. With this curve selected, press Edit or tap on your keyboard to go into Edit Mode. And this option comes up, the draw mode, left click on that. And your arrow turns into a pencil, so you can draw a curve yourself. So left click and drag, and that's a curve. And we don't, want, we don't need this curve right now, so we're going to go to our move tool, and left click and drag over this one, and press delete. And then tab again to get out of edit mode, go back to our, the curve we just drew. And now if we click on add crowd, it's going to add a crowd along that curve. And they're walking, press play, they walk, which is pretty cool. And your options here, you can change the direction of <clears throat> their walking process by clicking on this arrow. They go in the opposite direction. You can go back, you can toggle the width, so on and so forth. But if you see that, I mean, for me, they're walking kind of in place a little bit too much. They're not walking fast enough according to their strides. So I've seen that if you put the speed up to two, left click in there, press two, enter, and then press play. Now they're walking according to how they're striding, according to the movement that they're, you know, that they have been given, which is cool, which, which makes it look more realistic. Um, you can change the offset. Uh, once again, there's a point of interest you can add to your scene. Uh, so that's also something great. And another thing that I'd like to showcase before I end the tutorial is you can add characters to individual characters, you know, to your uh, scene, even with these models. But let's start a new scene again so we can start from scratch. So file, new, general, don't save. Delete our cube again, shift A. Mesh, plane, S to scale it up, drag up our mouse. And the reason why I want to show you this is because uh, there's something that you have to do so that you don't end up frustrating yourself when you want to actually add an individual person to your scene in terms of them being animated. So let's go to procedural crowds again and click on individual humans. Now, if we scroll up, you have uh, different categories. You have men, high poly, low poly, women, high poly, low poly. And you have different individuals here wearing different attires, so on and so forth, in different poses. Some of them have their arms crossed in the front, some in the back, some 
hands in the pocket, others by the side, so on and so forth. So if you click on uh, the thumbnail, those will come up. You want to change your characters, click on the character that you see. Click on Add Human. And they'll come in. They don't have to come in as T poles. You can change that. <clears throat> Excuse me. As you toggle down. Now, usually when it comes to adding animation to a model, to a character, you click on the armature and click on add animation and you play. But with this, that doesn't happen for some reason. The way they set up the, the uh, add-on is that you have to click on the model itself and then click on add animation. He's existing. Okay. Then the animation is applied. You can see that he's uh, going to town there. You can also preview your animations and the way the preview works is it uses your your uh, built-in video player that's already on your computer so you click on that and it'll give you a preview hopefully it'll come up it won't crash the computer yeah there it goes it gives you a preview of what you're looking at in terms of the uh, animation so yeah this is uh, the procedural crowds add-on and it works really really good one more thing though <clears throat> is that with the random or the march part that also uses the cursor it's the same process going to top view uh, same process with uh, following the curve it does the same thing going to top view uh, add a curve shift a then go to edit mode click on the draw curve tool draw your curve left click and drag and then add crowds and then it'll add a crowd to uh, your scene a marching crowd to your scene so yeah, that's this today's Blender quick tip, the procedural crowd add-on. And uh, once again, thank you guys who have subscribed in the past. And those of you who are subscribing now, those of you who are subscribing in the future, really appreciate it. And uh, thank you guys because of your support and your help. It's really helping the channel to really get uh, notor notor notoriety, I guess I can say, and really start starting, starting, I'm getting choked up here, It's starting to get the channel really up there. And I really appreciate you guys' help and support. And I will see you guys on the next one. All right, adios.